I'm Ethan Banks from the Packet Pushes, and today I'm going to show you how to make one of these. So here's a cable like you might buy at the store. Uh, it's a twisted pair cable that you would plug in from your computer or from your wireless access point into the internet or a wall jack. Well, what is this thing? What is in this cable? What's, what's special about it? Here's one that I've stripped away to show you what's inside. What's inside are twisted pairs, four of them, with different colors, orange, blue, green, and brown. And these twisted pairs are what carry our signal from the computer to the network and back. Making a cable means knowing how to take these pairs and putting them into one of these ends. This is an RJ45. Eight little pins at the end, eight little conductors. We're gonna guide these twisted pair ends into this RJ45. So to do this, I've got some tools. This is a cable crimper. This is be the last step of our process. We'll use this to crimp the RJ45 onto the uh, cable itself. Uh, this is a cable uh, cutter. We're gonna use this to cut the outer sheath, the outer jacket of our twisted pair cable. And then this, of course, is a good old fashioned wire cutter. So we need to start by stripping away the outer jacket on our twisted pair cable. We're gonna use this tool to do this. This has got a little cutting edge inside and I'm gonna take the cable, and I'm gonna pop it into the outer hole here. I'm not gonna put any pressure on this. It's, it's spring loaded, it's got enough. I'm gonna give it a spin. And now I've got this cut in the cable that I can use to make a nice clean removal. One thing you want to be careful of is that you didn't cut too deeply with this thing and then damage the small twisted pair cables inside. And I'm going to do a quick inspection here, give it a look around. I think we're in good shape. I don't see any cuts that went deeper than I wanted them to go. So the next step here is I need to split out my colors. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove this pull string that's here. And now I need to sort my twisted pairs into the correct color order. Does the color order matter? Yes, it does. There is a standard you should be making your cables to, and that standard is the TIA EIA 568B standard. That specifies the color order to be white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, and brown as we go across in pin order. <clears throat> Again, the pins we're talking about is this RJ45 with the tab down. So pin 1 would be in the left and pin 8 on the right as we look at my RJ45 here. That's what we're working towards. Alright, what have we got? If I straighten these out, I can see I've got my white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, and brown. Great! Now the ends of this are a little bit jagged, right? They're not even, and I want them to be even and flush when I uh, put them into the RJ45. The other problem is just length. I've got a little more of the twisted pair cable than I want. I actually want the gray jacket to sit inside of my RJ45 so that when I crimp it, it holds tightly. Here's where my cutters come in. I'm gonna use these. And and now I've got a nice even end. So now I'm ready to put these into the jack. I slide them in carefully. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna pinch right here the gray jacket really tightly to hold the twisted pair cables that are inside the jacket uh, snug up against it because I want uh, the ends to get shoved right into the end of the jack you know very tightly. If you look in the side here you can see there's a, a golden pin and uh, there's eight of them that are going to get when I use the crimping tool they're going to uh, insert themselves into each of the eight conductors that are inside there. If I have one that's too short I might not have a good connection. So I'm looking at the end of my cable here and I'm expecting to see the ends of the copper showing all the way through. If that's true, 
I push this in. Now I'm ready to use my crimping tool. So you see the crimping tool on the back there? It's got all those teeth. We're just going to shove the pins in and uh, connect to this end. I put it in here. All right, see how we did. I've got my crimped cable, so I see I've got my tooth there is uh, shoved down into the gray sheath to hold the cable together. That's good. It'll help the cable resist tugging and somebody ripping it out from the wall. Three-year-olds, you know who you are. And I kind of look in the end. It seems okay. I can see all my ends through. I look in the side, and I think I've got a good end here. So let's go ahead and make the next one. When shopping for boxes of cable, you'll spot both Cat 5E and Cat 6. The difference is in the twists per foot, both of the individual twisted pairs and of the pairs twisting around each other. This is why Cat 6 cable tends to be fatter than Cat 5E. Cat 5E supports as much as 2.5 gigabits per second, but if your budget permits, use Cat 6. The higher quality Cat 6 cable supports speeds of 5 gigabits per second, and even 10 gigabits per second can be reached, at least over shorter Cat 6 runs. Now I've made the second cable end. It looks good to my eye, to my visual inspection. I think we've probably got a good cable, but how do we know? Well, we could plug it into the computer and hope, but I've got a little cable tester that I can use that'll give us a, a better answer, something a little bit more definitive. This is a very simple device. All it's going to test for me is continuity across my eight conductors. So right now it's telling me that all of my eight conductors are open. That is, it is telling me that there is not a closed loop between the, the loop end and the tester end. So I'm going to plug in. I press the button to test, and what have we got? Well, we've got a good connection all the way through. This cable is passed. Uh, all eight cables, one through eight, are connected. Um, and that's good. It means I got the pins in the right order. I got the twisted pairs to the right pins, and all of them worked. So I've got a good cable here. So one final note about that tester I was using. That's just a cheap tester that proves I've got good continuity, good signal flowing between the ends. It did not certify the cable. If you're making patch cables for your data center, you're making your own cables for custom length in rack, and you need to certify that cable, you need a grown up tester, like something from Fluke Networks, let's say. Uh, Fluke is a vendor I'm familiar with because I've used them off and on over the years to make sure that the cable I made not only was uh, connected well, it's got good ends on it, but that it's certified to transmit data at a particular rate, such as gigabit uh, Ethernet.